we've got a few um, conversations going on in the in the chat. Now, one of the things that you you emphasised, which is I think of particular relevance to the discussion that we're having in the context of the uh, CAP networks, is this concept of a knowledge reservoir of a European level uh, knowledge um, reservoir. And I know that we have some we have some people in the call who are a little bit more familiar with the work which is going on. And I see that Miriam again has asked very directly, I mean, what does such a knowledge reservoir actually mean in in, in practice? And I wonder if, I mean, for example, Peter, Peter Parry, I mean, I know you've been a little bit closer to the development process because you're you're part of a consortium. And, and you're trying to explain to Miriam using some kind of metaphorical stuff but in actual fact um i mean what are we talking about here with this with this uh knowledge reservoir and in the in the eureka project um well i uh, explain a bit um the eureka project is uh using the best technique to get non-scientific knowledge because scientific knowledge is already organized in a good way in the open science policy of the Commission, uh, to gather it, to grasp it from everywhere, and to get it together in a way that it can be used easily uh, and uh, it can be reused, because uh, that's important that you only use it, uh, uh, bring it into the system once, and you use it for many different uh, situations. Um, in fact, you could say wherever uh, uh, drops of rain fall in the river, we, we put it in the reservoir and uh, below it we create uh, the irrigation system. But that's another one. That's the continuation of the EP service point where a lot of networking and so on is, uh, is, uh, is supported and it's all the countries who uh, support the use of it. Uh, but the, the, you need such an infrastructure to be able to irrigate. So we make an, inf uh, in fact, you could compare it with an irrigation system and a, a river uh, which uh, goes into a reservoir. But of course, this um, um, is not right because the more you work with information, the more you get information and you should use that as well because the um, uh, conversion from answers that you get in uh, research and uh, uh, solutions that farmers make is, uh, is uh, uh, an art in itself. Yeah, thank you, Peter. And thank you also for mentioning the fact that, I mean, Inga has talked about a project at the moment, which is called Eureka. And she clearly, clearly identified it as a pilot, as a feasibility study, testing the practicality of building an online platform, which to answer Miriam's question, essentially is a sophisticated database with all of the really interesting features, functionality that Inga has described. But the really interesting element actually is what Peter is starting to talk about, which is a follow on project, which was mentioned also by Inga, which will take that pilot project and basically mainstream it. And it will mainstream it by firstly focusing very much on building a network around it to feed it, feeding in from this extraordinary diversity of projects that uh, which are which are um, uh, funded under under Horizon. But very importantly also will be extra activities to embed this basically database into particularly into the national accuses. So there will be very, very targeted dissemination activities. There will be uh, training and demonstration activities built around it, et cetera, et cetera. And that will be a seven year program in order to embed this functional um, database and add real value to it, which is unbelievably exciting. It's also quite challenging as well, but that's what makes it exciting. So um, I hope that's helped to clarify some points there. And Miriam, again, thank you for asking these really, really important, really direct questions. Now, I'm neglecting the fact that uh, I think it's uh, uh, Kjell from, I think from Sweden. Um, you have your hand up. Mm, yes, please. Um... 
I'm working for both um, uh, the Federation of Swedish Farmers and for Copa Cusheka. And in my head, I think we can improve the knowledge hubs we already have in Europe and nationally and also regionally. I mean, we have uh, innovation support systems, we have institutes, uh, really big ones like in France, for example, and in many other countries. And I also think we can work more with the um, funding boards. Uh, in my country, for example, we have asked for special calls on animal welfare, plant protein calls. So I think you can work in so many ways with existing systems um, and try to improve them and try <clears throat> to get them more farmer oriented. Um, uh, for example, the institutes, uh, they have a, a mission to, to link the university with the uh, farming <coughs> societies. So why not try to improve the system you have? That's my uh, message. Um, because uh, you can Google a lot, but then you need more advanced um, knowledge sometimes. And then you need to ask someone uh, usually nationally, and, uh, yeah. uh, and I think that, that's a good way to to, to um, work with the people you already have around you. Uh, so that's uh, one solution, I think. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for Kel. I think that's, I mean, a really fundamentally important you know, message. I mean, firstly, not to throw out, as we say, we have a, a saying in English, not to throw away the baby with the bathwater. And the point is, there are some extremely effective existing uh, knowledge transfer programs, for example, um, you know, linking institutes to um, knowledge transfer activities. I know, for example, that in, in Estonia, um, you know, the, the network support unit is already engaging with that knowledge transfer program and it's engaging with a whole range of, of institutions. So there are good foundations here for building upon. But I think also the point which Inga has just made also in, in the chat is this issue of interoperability. And if um, if we ca if we are to facilitate the easier, more rapid, more diverse exchange and transfer of knowledge, then we also need to be looking at the interfaces between them, particularly, particularly the interface between European level EU funded projects and what's happening at a, at a, you know, at a national, at a national level. And I know there have already been some interesting discussions with member states stepping forward, for example, towards the Eureka project, asking for further information on the technical specifications, not only of the system itself, but very importantly, the technical specifications of the knowledge objects. I mean, how are they described? What's the data? What's the descriptors that you attach to them? And so there's a really, really interesting area of going on here, but it's progress is being made very, very, uh, very rapidly indeed. So thank you for thank you for reminding us.